Okay, we'll call the meeting to order. Mike, could you please call roll? Ms. Benetti. Present. Dr. Brown. Mr. Essenclair. Here. Ms. Hogue. Ms. Hollingworth. Here. Mr. Knuckles. Here. Ms. Paoli. Vice President Hogaro. President Crooked. Here. Um, please stand for the pledge. Oh, oh, wait, where are we? There. There. <laughs> One over there. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Mike, could you please read the statement concerning open public records? Open public meetings, sorry. <laughs> Public notice of this meeting pursuant to the Open Public Meetings Act has been given by the superintendent of schools in the following manner. On January 10th, 2023, notice of this meeting was posted on the interior of the school administration offices, 95 Grove Street, Haddonfield. Uh, written notice was submitted and filed to Haddonfield Borough Clerk, and notices were emailed to the Courier Post and the Retrospect newspaper. Thank you. Okay, um, thank you all for coming. I know it's summer, and so it's challenging. As you can see, we're on a bit of a skeleton staff here as well. Um, so thank you for coming out. We're gonna start with our student commendations for the South Jersey Honors Orchestra. Mr. Hacker? Mr. Hacker? Mr. Hacker? Yes. Mr. Hacker. Come on, Mr. Hacker. Okay. It's probably best if you talk a little bit about this and introduce our students. Yes. All right, so the South Jersey Elementary Honors Orchestra is an orchestra filled with all the students from all over South Jersey. Um, their names were submitted by their orchestra director um, with a rubric um, with all these different criteria, notes, scales, um, articulations, all these different musical aspects, then submitted to a committee, and then that committee chose the top players in South Jersey. They then got the music, their director had worked with them, over the course of lunches, after school, before school, um, to prepare them for the one rehearsal that they had in the morning for about three hours. And then that afternoon, they put on a concert, um, which is pretty impressive. All these students that came from all different schools all over South Jersey and put together this musical showcase. So it's pretty impressive um, the feat that they accomplished. So a round of applause for them. Everyone can get a big group picture. Step with us. Oliver Sharon. Thank you. 
Florence Rosenberg. I don't see. So just go on to. Yeah, I don't see the I don't see the high school students here for presentation. So. Okay. Thank you. Thank you very much. Um, well done. Okay, so um, we're going to move on. We, I don't see the students here for the presentation, so we're going to go right on to the board committee um, report, which, in a second, a lot of, I'm, I'm doing the, um, I what's that? I have two I have I have curriculum and we're doing a heavy lift today because I have curriculum and policy. So this is a, I did SLC last time. So oh, there you go. So now let me see. Okay. Okay. So um, we talked about at the curriculum committee. We talked about the summer curriculum work, um, which there is a uh, spreadsheet there. You can see where everybody's doing what what work is getting done. It's a lot, um, a lot of it is working on curriculum maps and um, making sure that we're, we're changing the format. We're putting the curriculum actually in Genesis, correct? And we're using a more reader-friendly format, which I can, as somebody who has taught, is invaluable because as teachers come in, having a usable curriculum that's clear to read is is huge i mean so and yeah. that's consistent yeah and i'll I add to that so the the curriculum documents are currently housed in a platform called on course on course is currently used to house curriculum documents uh, for evaluations teacher evaluations teacher sgos and teacher professional development plans we are uh, discontinuing our use of on course and migrating everything over to genesis which is our student uh, uh, management platform. Uh, so th the reason for that is one, we try to reduce platforms whenever possible. Uh, and two, it's uh, at a cost savings to the district uh, north of $30,000. Wow. Yeah. 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 Y
That's great. And um, shout out to our new supervisors because a lot of their early work is going to be overseeing this curriculum mm -hmm. maps and the changes to the curriculum and the, the um, alignment and as well as putting it into this new format, um, which I think is a great way for them to cut their teeth as they're getting into, I know some of them are already in the district, but the awareness of what each grade level is doing because this is part of their task for the summer. Um, I think that, that, that that's a good, so thank you. Um, option two we talked about, uh, there's gonna be a new PE application to make that more, um, uh, you know, to, to regulate that a little bit better. Consistent. Consistent, thank you. Um, and then the professional development is underway, the planning for professional development already. We have a keynote speaker for a wellness day in November, who was someone we've had in the past, right? Who was very well received. Um, we're doing INRS professional development, which is um, intervention and re referral services. And that's um, more of an evidence-based intervention, which the idea of INRS in the way it plays out is the idea is that you, you do a smaller intervention earlier on and that prevents more significant needs later on in having referrals to special education, correct? And so there's going to be some more professional development on that because a lot of that is being attuned to what you're looking for and understanding how those referral processes work. So um, I think that, um, that that's a, uh, a good thing. Uh, we're also purchased a new uh, platform, which is part of LinkIt called the Intervention Man Manager that's going to help monitor progress um, and we'll be leveraging grant money to fund this INRS initiative. And a major focus for professional development over the summer is the math pilot training. Questions about curriculum? Okay, um, I'll go on to policy. Is that next? I'm just gonna go either way. No, I'm gonna, oh, are you right? Because I'm yeah, in a group. Yeah. All right. I'm not really in a group, but I'm focused on how well it's going. <laughs> um, okay. So, you know, we have our policies for, for um, second reading. So the only major policy for first reading is 9140 which is the Citizens Advisory Committee. Um, the suggestion was to do away with, and please, you know, correct me if I'm wrong, but the suggestion was to do away with the regulation. That came from a suggestion to us, right? But we decided we want to keep that regulation because it actually helps to define what we're looking for. Yeah, we, 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 while there are a lot of redundancies in uh, policy 9140 and regulation 9140, uh, we thought it was best to maintain that because uh, it does provide one or two points of additional clarification and structure uh, should we utilize um, a, a, a committee. Like this. We talked about policy 9191, which is booster clubs. Uh, we discussed the purpose of the clubs um, and uh, we discussed, um, you know, if it was possible to audit booster clubs and also how each booster club really functions of what's what works for its own group of boosters. And so if you if you're in different sports, you'll know they all kind of operate a little differently. And so um, we talked about about that. And Chuck was going to talk to Lefty about um, if there's any um, Pele County works for clubs activities during the school year. And Gina was going to do a little bit of research on um, how booster clubs are run and what type of uh, relationship they have with administration. Because they're, they're very much their own entities. Um, and so what's our role in, in the boosters? Well, um, I already talked about policy and regulation 9140. Um, policy and regulation 257250 is school and facility names. I feel like this is coming up. We've, we've been discussing this, right, for years. But um, one of the things we discussed was in reference to naming building rooms and facilities in response to monetary donations versus naming something in honor of a person who played a critical role in the district. And we agreed the policy should remain as it's written, which is that um, it is 
it, that it would be anti antithetical to the history and mission of the district to name a facility after an individual simply because of monetary donation. And so we'll continue with possibly naming rights for someone that we want to me commemorate, but not, not because of money. Can you remind me, does the policy itself require that the individual have been deceased before it's named after them? Or separate from the district in two years. Five, seven, right. five years. Because the big thing now so is that they have a person. Yeah. Okay. A lot of, I know well, we're talking you know about, about because I did a nonprofit law forum on the dangers yes, of allowing definitely. living because the problem donors. is couples do bad things. Right. And you get an Enron yeah. stadium and oh. you're yeah. in trouble. So, I mean, that's something we can always, always discuss too. Uh, policy 5512 is on HIB. Um, there were some updates to it, but um, the one suggestion was that you could go to a three-member panel as opposed to a full board hearing. Um, we, as a committee, decided that that wasn't something we wanted to do. We'd rather stay a full committee. Um, do So we would do a committee of a whole whenever we have an HIV hearing rather than designate three people to do the hearing. Um, I, we all just felt that it was important to, to that we all play a role in, in the HIV hearings. Uh, policies for future discussion. Um, 2312, which is elementary class size and assignment, which would also call into play geographic areas. Um, policy 0167, public participation in board meetings. We briefly, but really hadn't gotten to it yet, whether or not we want to move around when the public comment period is. I mean, originally we had the two, and then we went, which was changed a while ago for a specific reason, and then we changed it back to the one so that you could comment on both agenda and non-agenda items at the same time. Um, and then now we're thinking, like, just options of moving it earlier in the meeting versus keeping it where it is, keeping it, putting it later. Um, so we can, we're going to discuss that, that we really didn't get to it. Um, and I think that's really it. Am I missing anything? Gina, is there anything you want to add? Uh, no, it's covered it. Any other questions or comments? Is there, the booster clubs, you mentioned something about an audit. Is there something we're worried about and do we have the right to call an audit? Mm -hmm. I guess is. No, we were just thinking more along the lines of um, what, like where. No, there was nothing so like brought up. The policy, just, they're, they, they're accountable to us for X, Y, and Z, one of which is the finances. We don't ever audit them. And so we said, should we be doing this? Because this, that, and other thing. And, you know, when they make a donation, technically we have to approve all donations. So when they're going to put a scoreboard up, we get a donation. And they buy kids meals before a big meet or something to that effect. We don't want to be involved in that donation. So, so it's, 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 it's we're trying to define anything over X. We probably should know about. But we don't want to be involved in booster clubs. They like they're buying pizza. They're, they're buying, they're buying pizza. pizza. They're, they're buying kids T-shirts. That's for them to do what they want best for their kids. So we don't That's want to get involved. How we function with the PTAs, right? Um, Isn't that somewhat similar? Like we don't similar. get involved with the PTAs for right. a pizza yeah. party. Correct. Right. Yeah. Yeah. So it was more like, is our policy in line with our practice, right. and can we shape the policy better so that we are, you know, that the two are. Um, okay, Mike, you can take over. So we met um, the finance committee. We met last week. We had a nice, quick meeting. Um, we really only discussed two main topics. One was uh, Red Red Cross shelter facility usage. So. Uh, three of our buildings, the, the high school, Tatum and uh, Elizabeth Ann, they are each, they, they have been uh, Red Cross shelter facilities in the past, and we're going to continue that status quo that was brought to us from the borough. We're just renewing documentation. Um, so we're, we're, we're keeping that in place. Uh, you may be asking why not Central Mill, because it's the only building that doesn't have a generator. I actually asked that question today to confirm with, uh, with the borough. Um, so that's why. Um, the other item we discussed was uh, uh, Chuck and I. We have our monthly meeting with with the borough, and we talked about three three topics in that meeting. It was 
uh, field maintenance, which we kindly let the Baron know we're not um, we're not interested in them uh, uh, holding their uh, alternate <clears throat> bid that they went out for f uh, both field maintenance and grass cutting. Um, and then we also talked about uh, Cooley Hall and the future plans for that. Then we also talked about uh, right over here uh, adjacent to the high school. Southern Lake Ave, the, the barrow is going to start uh, issuing permits for that lot to help uh, enforce parking restrictions. Um, that was it. That was our meeting. Any questions? Uh, what do those permits look like? We don't know yet. They're going to give us an out. They're going to give us information in the summer. What What's the Cooley Hall update? So, well, the Cooley Hall update is it's it's in their capital improvement plan to, okay. to do it. <clears throat> we don't have a mutually agreed upon date yet. Okay. That um, was really my question. But that's... I think that's the next step. Okay, thank you. I just think that's important since we've been getting a lot of questions to be as transparent sure. as we can. Yeah. So the mayor and I have been trying to find a time to down talk. Just said this time of year. It's sure. So, time of year. so hopefully by the end of the next week we'll have more. That's great. Um, I'm going to ask the question with the, with the um, Central Middle is the only school without a generator. Is that concerning? Should we think about having a generator there? I think that's me. Oh, okay. <laughs> just, just for clarification, our generators are for emergency lighting and exit signs. Like, there's no HVAC. Oh, they're not they're, running. They're the, not running the school. Oh, okay. um, so, this these bills would be the absolute last resort because if it's the winter time, you couldn't, you couldn't get house people here or the heat of the summer. Our, our generators work just to keep the um, basics. basics on the emergency okay. lighting for the safety lighting and the exit signs. The high school runs on diesel, so they have to keep on filling up. Um, Tatum, as we know from a couple of years ago, has a, has a, a gas line because they dug into it one time and they had to close Tatum and send it home one day. Um, and and Haddon is also a gas line, right? Yes, yes. correct. Yeah, so it, it's weird because it only covers that. It's not like it runs everything in the building for a very long time. It's just one of the uh, it was explained to me that. It's just a checkbox. Oh, it doesn't have a generator? All right, no, that's, that doesn't fall within the policy of the right cross. Mm -hmm. yeah, it would have to be a pretty significant event for yeah. them to fill into our building. Maybe you should live with churches and everything's first. Oh, yes. And given that it's just an emergency exit lighting sort of uh, support from the generator, it's less critical, right? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I thought we were like, no, we, we the, probably things should, went down and we yeah. could still have We did have discussions of like, right. Should we be out beefing up that that system to maintain the school? If it's a winter event and our pipes freeze, that's problematic, right? Yeah. Really yeah. going to pump water for our pipes. So yeah. we had a discussion, and in the end, we don't think it would be a significant investment to do that for that situation. So we decide not to. Yeah, makes sense. All right, thank you, and um, I'll and then uh, a long range facilities so planning committee. Committee we met uh, a couple weeks ago. And uh, we, uh, this was also th uh, three uh, main, main topics we discussed. We discussed the the latest and hopefully, and I think final uh, layout of the floor plans for uh, the proposed 144 Kings Highway Early Childhood Center. Um, then we also discussed uh, progress on our DOE submissions, and we also uh, went into detail what what a DOE submission looks like. And I actually post meeting, uh, I, I broke it down into. I think it's six six different as six different aspects of what it is. There's a, a transmittal checklist, which is just a checklist of everything I'm about to say. Uh, a project application uh, Excel workbook for each project, uh, and this this is each project. You have to do this for every every single project. Um, sign, signed uh, cost estimates, schematic drawings, uh, the board of education resolution that's actually on the agenda tonight, and transmittal letter to the county superintendent. Those are the aspects of submitting to the Office of School Facilities in the Department of Education. Uh, and actually, I'm, I'm adding a little uh, extra here. So post-meeting, um, Superintendent Klaus, uh, Dr. Priolo, uh, Tim McFerrin, and I, we've been meeting with our architects outside of these meetings to talk in a much more detailed design uh, meetings. And we have our last one scheduled next week. We are, we are through Tatum uh, Middle Central School Haddon and Scout Field. We just have one last final look at the high school uh, and then also uh, proposed work for the Hopkins parcel and then we are done. Awesome. Good. And yeah. then we'll be giving more details <laughs> about yes. what uh, what's the plans entail. What's the plans entail? Exactly. Yes. Is it any okay. questions? That's great. 
you. Um, no PTA updates, right? Graduation was very <laughs> wet. <but thank you. laughs> no, oh, we did you have something? Um, we actually oh. met the day before oh, okay, our last meeting, right. so we're good. Okay. Um, yeah, it was wet but beautiful. So um, I thought it was it was a moment. Um, it, was, it was very beautiful. And graduates, for those that don't follow swimming, Henry McFadden mm -hmm. was in the final, the men's 200 freestyle, which is a really big deal. He plays sixth. So, and so yeah, that's Henry. awesome. <laughs> All right. Um, Dr. Priola, do you have anything for your report? Uh, I do not, other than just excited to start our three summer programs, our summer enrichment, our summer intervention, and the SWAPI and SWAI program. The SWAI begins on Monday, the enrichment and intervention begin on Wednesday. I'm excited about that. That's great. And Dr. Priola, how many kids approximately are going to benefit from these programs? How many kids are involved? Uh, all three uh, programs. Uh, Sorry, 150 students. Wow, that's, that's, that's a big undertaking. Yeah. Thank you. Busy. Um, Mr. Klaus, do you have anything? I, I, I am going to jump out of line. Uh, our new supervisor, content area supervisor for the arts, PE, world language, and HIV, Rob Fox, so this is like, he's got his, his family with him. I'm not sure going to make them stay all the way through this to meet the personnel. Yeah, no, no, so no. It looks like someone might be tired to go home. So um, <laughs> Rob uh, is, is with us. Uh, we're welcome him here tonight. Rob, if you want to say uh, just hello. Yeah. Uh, all right, you can tell us a couple things. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's my wife, Kayla, my daughter, Lizzie. Yeah, we're really excited to, to get involved with the Haddonfield community. And, um, you know, I'm sure you'll see her at a lot of events that I'll be at. Yeah, and so thank you so much. Wonderful. Um, for working. Thank you. Oh, well, glad you're here. If, if Lizzie wants to hang around and see how board approvals work. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Exciting stuff. <laughs> and now you're coming from each champ? I am. Yeah. 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 Um, so that's going to be very helpful for us moving in that Rob has that area of expertise and would help push that along the way. And it's important to note that our, our hiring committee was very enthusiastic when they learned the news that mm -hmm. uh, Rob accepted the position. Mm -hmm. He's already started collaborating with his uh, colleagues, Katie Russos and uh, um, uh, Matt Donato. Uh, so we're, we're excited. We're excited to have you on board, Rob. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Welcome. Thank you. Yes. Welcome. Did you have anything else? That's all. Okay. Um, I don't really have anything in there. Um, I just wanted, well, I already said what I was going to say, which was graduation was very nice. So thank you for all who make it possible. Um, and, you know, thank you. It was just a really, I thought it was, I mean, because I had a graduate, so that was part of the emotional. I'm obviously, it was more meaningful than it normally is, although it's always meaningful. Um, but knowing that this group had been through so much and, you know, freshman year was COVID for them. And so um, seeing them graduate in the pouring rain just felt really appropriate. But they were outside and we got it done and, and um, with no delay. And I thought it was nice. And so much enthusiasm. That was so much really wonderful to see. The and speakers were nice. fantastic. And I, my so dream old. was to have a picture of my robes with Ava and her robes. And the picture, of course, came out like they had that cat that like was a little yeah, umbrella, so she a looked bit. fine. And I'm like <laughs> next to her, all soggy, but it was I, it was still, still done, which is very nice. Um, okay, so let's move on to our public comment. Um, Oh, wait, hold on, I've got a, too many tabs open here. All right, I'm going to wing it today because most of us are frequent flyers. <laughs> um, we're now going to have open public comment. When you come up, please state your name and the name of your street. We have three minutes um, for each comment, and you can make an additional comment after everyone who made a comment has made there. So if you make your three-minute comment, um, then we'll let you know. Greg will we'll give us a signal when three minutes is up. 
Uh, if you care to make another additional comment, you can do that again once everyone has had a chance to make their first. Um, we ask that be respectful and that um, we have a sense of decorum and um, that you project your comments towards the board and not at members of the audience. So that said, that was, wasn't too bad. Yeah. All right. And you kids may, may be up. watching. And kids may be. But probably not. <laughs> and I didn't say televised, which I have to take out. I have to figure of another word. Streamed Stream. and recorded and, recorded. and posted on the internet for posterity. <laughs> Okay, you, you're welcome to come. Okay, all right, we will close public comments. Thank you for listening to my <laughs> my statement anyway. Um, all right, talking about items for Board of Education approval. In the summer, we do not have the working session, so this is kind of both. Um, so we will be voting to governance, acceptance of the monthly HIV vandalism violence report, approval of fire and security drill report, approval of first reading policy 9140, approval to abolish policy 9100, um, approval of for second reading bylaw 0144 for board member orientation and training, policy 2520, Policy 3217 um, and 4217 on corporal punishment. Policy 5405, sorry, 5305, health services personnel. Policy 5308. Policy 5310. Policy 6112. Policy 6115. Dot, um, dot 04 for federal funds. Policy 6311. Policy 7440. Regulation 2520, Regulation 5308, Regulation 5310, Regulation 6115.01. And um, motion, staff, and May. Um, I'd like to make a motion to add F, affirm HIV incident that. Uh, Number 9799. They have a motion? Motion. Greg and Mike. Okay. Discussion? I think we covered it. Agreed. Yeah, and um, can you remind me, Gino, is policy 9100 public relations? Is that just, we're, we're abolishing that. We have something in its place. That's right. correct. Okay. Yeah, I, for, I forgot the actual, I can look it up, but uh, yeah, it, it, it was redundant based on a revision of a different policy that was done earlier in the year. Okay. Yeah, I remember the conversation. I just wanted to make sure. Um, okay. Uh, can you call roll? Ms. Benecki. Yes. Mr. Exemplar. Yes. Ms. Hollingworth. Yes. Mr. Knuckles. Yes. And President Brooker. Yes. Curriculum and special education approval of field trips, conferences, traveled overnight field trips. Resolution to approve Grant Watch subscription renewal for 23 24 school year. Resolution to approve the 23 24 Lincoln software licensing agreement. Resolution between the Board of Ed and Learn Well for homebound instruction for a student. Um, a resolution for Board of Ed and Learn Well for another homebound student. A resolution for, between the Board of Ed and Learning Ally for the 23-24 school year for the elementary and middle school. A resolution between the Board of Ed and Read Naturally for the 23-24 school year. A resolution between the Board of Ed and Susan Kelly for Sky Yoga to provide 60 lessons of preschool yoga. A resolution um, to between the Board of Ed and Colleen Gangami for a Family First to provide RDI services for therapy for our students. Resolution between the Board of Ed and EduCR. Resolution between the Board of Ed and Camden County Educational Services for a psychoeducational evaluation for students. Resolution between the Board of Ed and Yale School to provide out of district placement for a student. Resolution between the Board of Ed and Yale School for another out-of-district placement. 
resolution between um, Board of Ed and Yale School West for an out-of-district placement. Resolution between the Board of Ed and the Lark School for an out-of-district placement. Resolution between the Board of Ed and Lark School for another out-of-district placement. Resolution between the Board of Ed and First Children's Services for home instruction. Resolution for a student to receive homebound instruction from Lindsay Quinn from May to June. Resolution between the Board of Ed and Hampton Behavioral Center for homebound instruction for another student. Resolution between the Board of Ed and Brookfield Schools Jefferson Health Center um, for homebound instruction. Resolution for a student to re receive homebound instruction from the, those two teachers. Resolution for a student to read homebound instruction from the following three teachers. Another student to receive homebound instruction by the following three teachers. Another um, homebound instruction for, um, for these another three teachers. And resolution for another student to receive homebound instruction um, from those two teachers. A resolution between the Board of Ed and Walsh Legacy for homebound instruction. Resolution between the Board of Ed and Walsh Legacy for another homebound instruction. Resolution for the Board of Ed and Walsh Legacy for another homebound instruction. Resolution for the Board of Ed and Walsh Legacy for another homebound instruction. Resolution to improve the Haddonfield School District Transition Instructional Program and the um, MOU between Camden County College, GSP, and the school district. Resolution between the Board of Ed and Behavior Therapy to provide psychoeducational evaluation for a student. Resolution between the Board of Ed and Orchard Friends to provide extended school year for a student. Resolution between the Board of Ed and New Grange School for an out of district placement. Can I have a motion? Motion. Mike and Steph. Um, questions, comments? I, I want to field trip with uh, Mr. Smith. You know, and kids, of course. But uh, <laughs> he, he's, he spent a lot of time uh, just saying how appreciative he was of us approving field trips and his colleagues and other school districts that have difficulty with that. So, and it was super fun. It was, you know, the horseshoe crabs. Horseshoe crabs. Oh yeah, my God, it's crazy. So, uh, anyway, so I just want to pass that along. His book he had published just came out. Yeah, so yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, he's pretty great. Are they selling it? Do you know in England? Do they have it? I don't, I don't know. Have it. I'll have to, I can reach out to him and say, but um, yeah, that's exciting. Yeah, I'm glad you got an opportunity to go. That to was, go. That um, yeah, there's a lot of, um, we have a lot of new hires um, coming on board and a lot of, um, it's a very like fluid time in education because there's, there's more movement than I think traditionally we see, school districts see. Um, so it's just always, um, it's hard to see people go and it's also, but it's exciting too to see we have um, new people coming in. Um, Jane, we have to vote, don't we? Yes. Yeah. Uh, no. Personnel is next. Uh, next. We're, we're in curriculum. Thank you. I was looking at all the teacher names. <laughs> so <laughs> right. I'll just say that then. I said about well, like that. Thank you. Can you pause it for a moment? Yeah, I'll pause. <laughs> You were doing so long. I know. I because I, I said homebound instruction like thirty times, and then I, I I got off. All right, I'll go. Back. I'll get off sentimental next. Go ahead, Mike. Mr. Essenclair. Yes. Miss Hollingworth. Yes. Mr. Knuckles. Yes. Miss Panecki. Yes. President Gruber. Yes. Okay. Um. I forgot. This is always a very long agenda because you're approving a lot of stuff for next year. So, personnel, approval of new personnel, transfers, salary upgrades, mentoring, extracurricular, coaching appointments, leaves well, of absences. Now you can talk about yeah. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Resolution to approve um, student teacher from TCNJ to complete her student teaching at HMHS. Resolution to approve student teacher Mayor Con Megan Conway from Stockton to complete her student teaching at Tatum. Resolution to approve Nicole Knight from Rowan University to complete her summer externship. Resolution to approve school psychology intern um, Michelle Contarino from Rowan. 
Resolution to approve student teacher Tom Moylet from St. Joe's University to do his student teaching at, at Elizabeth Haddon. Resolution to approve the bus following bus drivers for extended school year. Resolution to approve Michelle Barringer um, to be paid 25 hours of summer for processing middle school sports physicals. Resolution to approve Data Reganata to process the HMHS school physicals. Resolution to approve Carrie Heinzel for physical therapy and evaluations for the 23 extended school year program. Resolution to approve Brielle Alexander and Samantha Ryan to attend child study team meetings during the summer. Resolution to approve employees as educational assistants for the 23 extended school year program. Resolution to approve the following employees for the 23 extended school year program. Resolution to approve the um, following employees for support staff for the 23 summer enrichment program. Resolution to approve the following employees as substitutes for the 23 summer enrichment. Resolution to approve Kate Lynham to complete summer intervention scheduling. Resolution to approve Jessica Fingerman to provide supplemental ELL support. Resolution to approve the summer 23 curriculum development hours. Resolution to approve Garrett Watkinson at, to be compensated for teaching 0.5 of a sixth class for the 22-23 school year, which will be prorated. Approval of the 23-24 contract for Michael Catalano as business administrator. Resolution to approve the 23 facilitator summer hours for curriculum writing for the 23-24 school year, paid at the curriculum rate. Resolution to approve the following teachers to teach an extra class, um, June 5th, 23 to June 21st, 2023. And approval of the superintendent to award employment contracts for open positions for the 23-24 school year, um, providing certification criminal background check, and um, et cetera. Motion? Motion. Steph and May? Yeah. Discussion. Aside from adding on what I already said, so it's exciting to have um, you know so many new people coming on board, and um, it, we're we're fortunate that we have a lot of our um, positions filled, right? Do we still have a lot of openings? We have we had a lot, we had we we're all filled like seventy two hours ago. Now we're no longer all filled, so um, we, we're doing pretty well. We still have some hard to find jobs. There's certain areas that are very challenging, very difficult to find. So we're looking for those. Um, you know, it's going to be it's going to be a challenge. That's 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 where we are. Um, we're actually we are actually going out and asking for people and going to people and saying, "Would you consider moving jobs?" Because it's sat our very house on spots. Um, things like World Bank, which are very fortunate in that. Um, we had uh, a long-term sub for us this year, which did an excellent job, and we had an opening, of, he was right there, he said, yeah, I'm interested, so we, we got lucky with that. The Spanish teacher would be very, very difficult yeah. to find. Yeah, Tommy had Yeah, yeah. Um, uh, uh, special ed teachers are incredibly difficult to find right now. It's, it's really challenging, so we're, we're going through those, and um, that's, that's, that's what it is. You will notice we have a bunch of uh, student teachers this year. I saw that. Uh, yeah, and that's the purpose yeah. of that is to try to start getting that, you know, getting people in the system that we know them, they know us, and if there's an opening and they do well, we've had a year long interview. Right. And, yeah. and, can do those. Yeah. and they often, um, well, Michael Donnelly, I mean, he was here. So it oftentimes, like all of us, we get into it, we realize, oh, we like it, and then, then we're more likely to stay, especially in those hard to fill positions. Um, okay, Mike, can you call on? Did anyone else have anything that I ask? Her? Mr. Essenbler. Yes. Ms. Hollenworth. Yes. Mr. Knuckles. Yes. Ms. Benek. Yes. President Crooker. Yes, but abstain from 12D and E. It still passes, right? You just need a majority here. Yes. D and E. So D and E, the two row and ones. Okay, business and finance recommendations, approval to authorize the superintendent, school business administrators um, to pay bills during the summer, 
authorize the school business administrator to close out petty cash as of June 30th, 2023, and open the 23-24 approved petty cash, July 1st. Approval for the license contract with Musical Theater International Broadway Junior Collection for Matilda. Approval of the license agreement with theater folks um, for a recipe for me. Approve Omni Financial Group to provide 403B administrator services. Appoint NW Financial Group as the financial advisor for 2324. Approval um, directing the distribution of the Hannibal Board of Ed Net surplus um, amount of $393,826 to apply to the board's 2324 premium in the fund fiscal year. Approval of educational data services to maintain licensing to participate in the New Jersey Cooperative Maintenance Program. Approve professional medical staffing to provide substitute nursing services. Approval of the following tuition reimbursements um, for the 23-24 budget. Approval of tuition reimbursements, um, well, some additional tuition reimbursements. Uh, approve the report of awarded contracts pursuant to PL 2015 Chapter 47. Approval of standard service contract with RFP solutions. Approval, acceptance of the donation from the Elizabeth Haddon PTA of four water bottle filling stations. Approved transfer of current year anticipated surplus to the reserves. Um, Approved the submission of the IDEA grant application. Approved the submission of the um, ESEA grant application. Authorization of land associates to submit the schematic plans and educational specifications for capital projects to the New Jersey Department of Ed. Payment of bills, budget transfers, board secretaries report, and cash summary report. Motion? Okay, Mike and Meg. Discussion? <laughs> I would thank the Elizabeth Haddon PTA for the donation for the water bottle um, filling stations. That's fair. I should also comment that my kids would be totally excited about Matilda Jr. So that's a that. nice thing yeah. To, yeah. to see on there because they've been watching that on Netflix on repeat since it joined Netflix. Yeah, I was going to comment on that one too. That's a, that's a good one, Matilda. Nothing like preschoolers running around singing. I'm going to be naughty. <laughs> Swing from your basement. Okay. Um, Mike, could you call roll? Miss Hollingworth. Yes. Mr. Knuckles. Yes. Miss Benecki. Yes. Mr. Esseclair. Yes. And President Crooked. Yes. Approval of the minutes from May, the special meeting May 9th, executive session May 9th. The regular meeting May 11th, executive session May 11th, the regular meeting May 25th, and executive session May 25th. Got a lot of meetings for May. Um, motion? <coughs> May? Mike? There's only so many of us today. So. I was catching up. Any, no. Anyone catch anything in the minutes that wasn't um, accurate? No, I looked too. <laughs> the typos. I thought I had one last time. I was like, oh, no, Caroline's not here. Yeah, Caroline yeah, checks something. Okay, Mike, can you call roll? Miss Hollywood. Yes. Mr. Knuckles. Yes. Miss Panetti. Yes. Mr. Essenberg. Yes. President Crooked. Yes. Items for future consideration by the board. Did everyone get the retreat agenda from mm -hmm. Linda? Mm -hmm. Not an item, but. Dr. Henderson says she'd be home reading a book tonight. Last time, oh, the last board yeah. meeting, we're sure to see her. But once again, Dr. Henderson, thank you for your, for working with us, your service. We really yes. appreciate all you've done. You're welcome. Thank you, Dr. Henderson. You're right. I can't see from the podium. <laughs> oh, so maybe that's the item. Maybe. Oh yeah, we talked about. Sliding this podium out of the way, podium, maybe aside we can from find the positions that help because you don't can't or the podium because you can't see the whole audience, but and then sliding it. We've talked about that, but if it's, <laughs> I don't, yeah, I don't know. The question might, might be, the question might podium. be, do we really need that giant podium? Yeah, we could, we could almost get like a, a music stand. 
Yeah, yeah, like one of those little. Yeah, you're right. It is a gift from uh, three classes. So we use it for events. All right. Like I think the the ATT that was a, that was a perfect yeah, alumni. That was a that's perfect, the, perfect the, podium of that. Maybe right that's maybe it's no, that's, that's the podium used for graduation. Okay. It's used oh. in the you know, housing all the time for all the events. Oh, yeah. And okay. some rain. And some rain. Well, yeah. it, it was covered yeah. up the whole time. Yes. Oh yeah. Oh yeah, I did see that. Yeah. It was it's more covered than any of us. That's right. <laughs> I think that's a reasonable suggestion. Yeah. Okay. okay. Um motion to adjourn. <laughs> That's what I said. You said <laughs> <that. Yeah. laughs> Steph is out. Motion to adjourn. <laughs> Steph. No one? Go ahead, Mike. Come on. Second. Meeting adjourned. No, too much. <sighs> Good job. Yeah, we really, we really did have a lot of meetings. In so you didn't have to always read the entire of everything mm -hmm. on the agenda, but remember that got changed. Oh. When we got Cusack, yeah, they, yeah, yeah we, we were all, well, maybe it was always that, but we got in trouble from Cusack.